and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be going through different things that you might need if you're like a beginner to cycling and you're thinking about starting. So first of all, the most important thing you need is a bicycle, which I've got behind me obviously. Um, it doesn't have to be any particular bicycle, like it doesn't have to be like a road bike like this. It could be anything really. I started out on, um, I originally had a Bolton, and I sold that and then it, a few years later I bought a hybrid and I rode that for a while and I upgraded it to a road bike because I was finding that I was wanting to go further and I don't know, I just sort of wanted to be a bit more of a racy position, I guess. Um, but any bike that you've got is fine or any bike you can get cheap is fine. It doesn't need to be new, it can be a second hand bike or just something old you've got lying around. Anything you feel comfortable riding is perfect for your first bike. And then once you've got your bike, it's always good to do a safety check before you go out on every ride. And you can click somewhere around here or maybe in the description below to find a link to ways to check your bike before you go out for a ride. Next, I'm going to talk about the expectations you might have. So first of all, on your first like few rides, you can't expect that you're going to be able to go like 100 miles or like, you know, go out for hours on end. Because of um, if you're like me, when I first started, I had this little route that I created that was like two or three miles long and I just went around it stopping constantly just to catch my breath and stuff because of I was quite unfit and overweight and it really helped me get sort of my confidence up and it was an all off-road route so it felt safe and I felt happy to go around it. Over time you will build up to be able to do longer rides but if you don't want to do longer rides and you just want to be able to just like cycle to the shops to pick up some things or just cycle to a cafe for cake then that's fine it doesn't really matter literally all that matters is that if you want to ride your bike you just have to know that not to expect yourself to be able to do something that you might not be able to do and just be prepared for anything that might get in the way of that like as in you might be tired your bike might have a problem or just you know things that could come up so talk about things that could come up that brings me on to the safety aspect so um one important thing that i would say is to have a helmet this is my helmet this is a newish helmet and the reason why i do think it's important to have a helmet is because of um in january or february i came off my bike I was going really slowly around the corner to get to the camel trail in Cornwall and I just slid on a bit of gravel and I went over sideways and <laughs> me being me, I decided to land on my head and the front of my helmet here was completely smashed and like a whole part came off so that, so, and I still had a cut on my lip and stuff and I still had a headache for a few days so that just proves you should wear a helmet because of no matter how like, you know, good at cycling you are or how good balance you've got, you could always fall off. I'm not saying you will fall off, it's just good to be prepared and just, you know, it's always good to be safe and just practice. Another useful thing to have, safety, is some gloves. Not necessarily because like, um, there's a few reasons why really. Um, one is if you're holding onto the handlebars, like it'll keep your hands not getting like blisters and stuff there, if you've got soft hands like me. And also like, say you fell off and you put your hand down, it gives you sort of like a layer of protection to like, you know, stop yourself from getting like gravel rash or anything like that. And the only reason I keep saying about falling off is because you're more likely to fall off like when you're going really slow or you'll stop like having to like navigate through like a gate or something. Those are the times you could fall off. It's not like you're going to be going like at high speed and stuff and you fall off. It can happen, but for me at least, the main times I have fallen off, it's always really, it's like really stupid. Like through a gate, like I'll <laughs> slip on something and then my bike will go over and I'll sort of end up like, <laughs> but otherwise, you know, you're gonna be okay. So if you're gonna be riding in like a low lit time or if you're gonna be riding on the road, I recommend that you have some lights. They don't have to be anything as fancy as this. It can just be something that just helps it so you're seen. Cause like anything to help you be seen is good really. Cause you know, you want other drivers and cyclists and walkers to see you. It's also good to have a bell because if you're going down like a canal path or like on a trail or something, there's always going to be walkers and stuff, so you always want to be able to ring a bell when you're coming up to them so they know you're coming, just because then they should move out of the way at least. And always obviously go a bit slower as you come up to people, just in case they don't hear the bell or they don't want to get out of the way. Another device for safety is a pair of sunglasses, because like if anything flicks up or any bugs come into your eyes, then they'll protect you. And because I've had so many times where I've been cycling like, long and the bugs got in my eyes, because I've not worn my glasses, even though I've got them. 
and like I once come to a stop in front of Lee and then he's got a bit annoyed with me because I stopped for no reason in front of him. I may have already mentioned this but also when you are going out you should always tell someone where you're going to be going because if you're going out by yourself and something happened and you didn't come home then at least the person would have an idea of where you were to know where to go to look or just if you had a mechanical and you needed them to come save you you don't have to try and give them directions to where you are because they already had some sort of idea of where you're going. One thing I do do when I'm going out on rides by myself, if it's Gooby down roads I don't know as well, or like it's at night or something like that, I do sometimes send Lee my um, live location on WhatsApp just so he's able to see where I am, just then if something did happen to me and I phone him, I wouldn't have to try and describe where I was or anything because it's just, it's just sort of like a peace of mind just you know to know that he knows where I am not any sort of weird creepy way just because it's just nice to know you've got that safety net that he knows where you are and if something does go wrong you can just say help and then he'll just see it on map and then he'll just go to you so yeah so that's another idea and next we'll talk about clothing because of I know you see a lot of cyclists out there all the mammals and all their lycra you know head to toe lycra and you don't have to wear lycra to go cycling um, the only thing that I would recommend is padded shorts are amazing. That like they don't take away all the pain, but they do just help quite a bit. And if you are going to wear padded shorts, don't wear pants. I know that may sound really odd, and lots of ladies I've said that to in the past have always been like, "Oh, but I don't want to take off, you know, I don't want to go out without pants because it feels wrong." And then when they've done it, they've been like, "Oh yeah, that's really worked." And then the other thing would be to if you are wearing like a jumper or a t-shirt it's like make sure it's like a brighter colour not black so you know you can be seen at all times because of not all car drivers see people when they're on their bikes and it's always best to be safe even when you're on a trail just because of you know sometimes people might not see you and now I'm going to finally talk about boots so boots planning is like good not necessarily like to plan exactly where you can go but just like, say you are a complete beginner and you're trying to think of somewhere to go to cycle and you just don't know where to go. You can think about like different trails nearby, like we've got the Camel Trail, the Gosmore Trail, um, and like a trail in Plymouth that goes up through the valley and they're all like safe off-road routes. And it's nice to know where some safe off-road routes are. Cause if you are a beginner, you're not gonna have like, you know, be able to like indicate like this and stuff. And just, you know, it's nice to know where you're going and like if you've just got a trail you know you can't get lost because you're just going to one place and coming back but if you do want to venture onto the road because you don't have any trails near you or you just want to be able to get some idea of how hilly you are where it is around you if you go on Strava if you've not been on there you can set up an account and they've got a section where you can create routes and on there you can just like put like a pin which I'll show you in a second of where you want to start and then where you want to go and it'll tell you like the elevation the miles and some other information the most important things i find are the miles and the elevation and i find if it's like so say you've got a 10 mile route and it's a thousand feet then that's usually like quite a hilly route so anything so like 10 to 1000 sort of is like that's a hilly route so like say you had a 10 mile route with 500 feet climbing then it's not hilly and like the lower the feet obviously the less climbing but in Cornwall everywhere seems to be about one mile to 100 feet so it's quite hilly everywhere except for on the trails so it is a good thing to use if you want to find somewhere flatter and there is an option you can tick that you know chooses the flattest option but you've always got to be careful because it can like put you on like um dual carriageways and stuff so always just be careful with that but I'll show you now how to what, what you can do on Strava and how you can plan routes. As you can see, I'm on Strava and I've clicked on create a route. And then I've gone to find a place to start the route, which is going to be on the Camel Trail. And then I've gone along the trail towards Waybridge, just along the flat bit. And I'm coming off the trail and back on some country lanes just to show you the difference in elevation. And then when I click save, in a minute you'll be able to see the elevation profile and see how the camel trail is quite flat and downhill and then it's quite hilly on the way back. So this is sort of like a 
average sort of hilly flat route. So thank you for listening to all that. If anyone else has any ideas on um, anything or any comments or anything they want to mention, if you just comment below and I can answer anything you want to ask. And good luck and go for it and get on your bike and have fun.